Hello everyone, my name is Neil with SuperTech. I've got a Xbox One X here that a customer just brought to me earlier today. Uh, basically, they're having no display issue. A lot of the consoles that I received, my apologies for the repeats on top of content that I'm actually putting on this on this channel. I'm actually just, whenever I get a chance, I'll go ahead and record a video, edit the video, um, and upload it. Uh, at times or actually most of my videos are almost about the same uh, Issue with the same console. So you guys uh, get tired with regards to the number of of uh, Videos of the same uh, type of issue. My apologies. It's just what I'm receiving and I'm just recording my process of Me fixing these consoles and uploading to YouTube video. So this console was dropped off by uh, a customer uh, here in my household, uh, I do run a home-based business. I don't have an actual location So the address you actually send your consoles to it is to my home address where I repair these consoles and I ship them back to you um, If any of you guys or gals are actually interested with me repairing your console here in the US only um, I'll have go ahead and leave my uh, website down in the description below where you can actually Create a ticket. You can also uh, you can also under contacts view what my address is, and then ship your console this way. Make sure you print out the ticket, put it into the package. That way, I know whom the console actually belongs to. Um, also, on my website, you'll be able to see my phone number as well, where you can actually get in contact with me if you decide you just want to go ahead and uh, want me to set it up for you. I can definitely do that for you as well. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and proceed with this repair. I do have this Xbox One X console that the customer dropped off. Basically, he stated that the symptoms he was seeing is at one point in time he was, he was playing the video game, and all of a sudden the console still turns on, but nothing was displaying for him. There's multiple reasons to why that can happen. Um, one of those could be the, the hard drive to where the console turns on, but there's nothing getting displayed because the hard drive possibly went bad. Secondly, uh, either HDMI port. Uh, thirdly, either there, there's a, also a fuse uh, that uh, is linked to the retirement chip, or link, yeah, to the retirement chip, or the APU, which uh, basically video data flows through. That could also stop it from uh, displaying anything. Or fourthly, being your um, your uh, uh, retirement chip or video encoder chip, however you want to call it. Um, I would say about 95% of the time. Um, on not 95, I would say probably about 80% of the time, um, it can be the retirement chip if your uh, HDMI port is actually in good chip condition. So we're about to go ahead and check those right now. I did take a peek at the HDMI port uh, earlier uh, whenever the customer dropped it off. The HDMI port itself actually looks good. It looks in really, really pristine condition. So I don't believe that it's going to be the HDMI port, but we'll look at that under the microscope just to confirm and validate. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and take this console apart and let's get down to the board so we can start diagnosing and see what's causing this uh, console to not show uh, any display at all. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse the teardown of this console and then get back to you once I'm down to the actual board. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is just take this hard drive completely out of uh, out of this caddy, um, and then uh, I will put the screen uh, where I show this type of software I'm actually using to check this uh, hard drive. And I'm going to put this in my little caddy back there, and then we're going to test the actual hard drive itself. Alrighty, so the um, piece of hardware I use is called Hard Disk Sentinel. Um, that's actually what the name of. Let me see if I can move the icon up here. That way you're you're able to see it. 
Uh, this is the icon I use here. So the software itself, it is called Hard Disk Sentinel, um, which pulls up this piece of software. And right now I've got my personal, uh, I have my personal hard drives hidden. Um, I don't want to see any other hard drive besides this hard drive that we've connected uh, so far. So let me go ahead and turn on my caddy real quick. Turned on the caddy. It should detect the hard drive, especially if it's in good condition. And um, it'll tell me what health, what percentage health it's in as well. Which looks like this hard drive is actually in good shape. As you can see, it actually has 100% health, performance 100%, temperature 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, so this hard drive, as it stands, is actually in good shape. All right, let me go ahead and safely uh, dismount the hard drive. I safely ejected the hard drive. And we are going to put it back together and continue with the teardown of the console. Alrighty, so we're down to the motherboard. Uh, we've got the heat, sink, the heat sink still on the actual board itself. One of the things I will say, and I say this on, um, I've said this on multiple videos, if you do not have one of these tools and you're a repair person, honestly, I suggest that you do get one. It makes it easy to be able to remove the heat sink side of these Xbox consoles. Uh, how easy? Let me go ahead and show you real quick. So this tool right here, it allows, instead of using a screwdriver, which uh, if you use a screwdriver with a flathead, uh, or a flathead driver and you put it in there, which is what I what I was using prior to this tool Sometimes I nicked the board accidentally and there was one time where I also I nicked it so hard where one of the traces was actually uh, torn and I had to uh, run a jumper wire for it so To avoid from from doing that. I suggest you get one of these tools uh, this tools you put it in here and Literally, this is how easy and simple it is you put it in there you just lift it up, and I've already got this corner lifted up already. And you just do that to all, to, actually, you just need to do that to at least three corners, and it's already loose, and you can just pull it off from there. So that's how easy and simple it is to be able to use this tool. And uh, I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. I am not sponsored by them. I do have uh, an affiliated link through my Amazon store, and I'm not trying to push it and sell it to a job, but I'm just saying how easy and simple it is to use that tool to be able to remove the, heat, the, the X clamp off of the Xbox console so that uh, you can remove the heat sink off of there without damaging the board. All right, so we've got the heat sink completely out of there. So next thing we need to do is validate that the HDMI port itself is actually in good shape and good condition. Visually, when visually inspecting this, it looks good. But let me go ahead and look at it underneath the uh, underneath the microscope real quick just to make sure let me go ahead and get to the microscope now all right so to me the this HDMI port looks to be in good shape it is okay if some of these here you know you see how you can see those pins there if they're covered a little bit that that's fine that doesn't do anything so long as these pins over here are actually good and the port itself is not broken, which it doesn't even move. HDMI my port itself, actually it's in good shape. It isn't broken. So that tells me here that the issue, and I need to check these filters real quick. Let me go ahead and get under, under the microscope, but on this other side here. Alrighty, so this HDMI port, looks to me it looks perfect 
Um, nothing wrong with the pins either. Let me go ahead and check these filters real quick just to make sure that they have continuity. Now the only issue I'm hoping it's not is this one here. I don't know exactly what the name of this chip is, STI or TI or something. Let's see, let me see if I can get closer to it. It's an ST chip, ST chip. It can also be this one here, um, but it's I've rarely and en uh, encountered to see if it's this one. I don't have another board to extract this from. Unfortunately, this piece, this uh, chip here, you cannot buy. But let's just make sure that it's not shorted. So I'm gonna put Red Probe on ground. Yeah, this piece is not shorted. <laughs> it's not shorted, so it's not gonna be that. So the issue most definitely is going to be the retirement chip, which is this chip right over here to the right. So the retirement chip, it is to the right of the HDMI port. So this is the HDMI port, the primary HDMI port. And this is the retirement chip, which is also known as the encoder chip, um, retimer, uh, video encoder, or whatever you want to call it, TDP-158. Basically, that's what the chip is. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this chip right now. And then we'll test to make sure that uh, we have video. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and prep this board. By prepping it, I mean, we're gonna go ahead and add some, uh, add some flux to this. Just a tad bit of flux. And we're gonna go use we're gonna use our hot air, hot air station. So we put some flux already on the chip. We're gonna go ahead and heat this board up. Temperature I'm using at seven seven hundred and sixty Fahrenheit, not Celsius, but Fahrenheit. I am in the U.S. We use Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Um, and my airflow, I'm gonna leave it at one hundred twenty percent. That way we can take off this chip pretty quick. The solder that's on there right now, it is uh, let it basically let it solder. Um, no, it's it's a, it's unleaded free solder. My, my apologies. It's unleaded free solder, which makes it uh, to where you have to use a lot more heat to be able to melt that solder completely. Um, which is why uh, I have a, I have it at 760 Fahrenheit and uh, 120. Uh, which is the max airflow for my quick 861DW uh, hot air station I'm using. All right, let's go ahead and uh, enough talking. Let's go ahead and remove this, uh, the retirement chip off. One of the things I felt I did fail to mention is look at the orientation. The chip itself it is upside down. Pin number one, it's bottom right side. You can tell by that dot right there. All right, chip is fully removed. As you can see, it did took a little bit more to uh, remove, and that's because, of course, like I said, it's got unleaded free solder. It's leaded free so solder that's on there and makes it more difficult to remove. Now, I, I'm not going to keep, there's a lot of people on there that say, uh, that have told me, why do you remove the solder off there? Why do you go over it? Why do you just use the same solder that's already on there? Um, I prefer... Uh, uh, basically, uh, 
fusing my let it free solder with the one that's there and then uh, quick it out to be basically removing it and added adding more just let it free solder afterwards um, that way for future reference if customer comes back and uh, has any sort of issues it makes it easier for me to also troubleshoot and or remove this uh, chip if needed uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is actually add some flux to this board while it's hot I've got my hot air station my hot air station I've got it at 700 degrees Fahrenheit I'm gonna go ahead and turn on as well my cheap my cheap um, fume extractor. I need to uh, make an investment on and buy me a better one than this. But for now, I'm using this. Um, and of course, go over these pins. And I'm going to zoom in just a tad bit more. Makes it easier to make sure that I stay within the area of this actual chip itself. During the pins, I'm going to add some leaded solder. On my tip and just go through it All right, we removed that let it free solder that was on there. What I did was I added just a tad bit of low melt solder, mixed it in with the solder that was there because that uh, let it solder that was in there just made it difficult for me to, to work with. Um, so I had to remove it. I had to completely, completely remove it. Alrighty, this port, the uh, not the port, but the uh, the pads, they are completely prepped and ready for the new chip to go in. Let me go ahead and grab the chip real quick. All right, I've got the chip right over here. Let's make sure that I've got it in the right orientation. It is currently upside down. Oh, come on. Right pin number one. You see the dot right there? So this is the dot, that's the dot, so this goes upside down. All right, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up the board. This is let it solder, so it should take less to heat up and melt. There we go. All right, let me add some flux to this. Flux will allow this to uh, this uh, chip to actually flow in its proper place. I believe that it is centered, so now I'm going to press it down in the center. You squeeze out any extra solder that may be in there. All right, awesome. 
Let's go ahead and uh, add a little bit more flux and then clean the packs. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up now. And then just check all the pins to make sure that they all look good. All right, let's go ahead and check all the pins. So the pin areas I'm gonna check first will be these at the, on the, at the very end. They look good, but these here are not touching. See that? These are not touching right there, so that's not good. I don't like that. Let me add some flux once again. Okay, those are good. Let me go ahead and check these other one now. Those are good. Okay. Alrighty, so this console, this console, as of now, as it stands, it is repaired. Only thing I need to do right now is just to do my final cleaning, adding a little bit, a little bit more of isopropyl alcohol, and just scrubbing it a little bit more because there's still some leftover flux, and I hate to leave flux left behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this. It is completely cleaned, clean like a baby's butt. Let's go ahead and uh, put the board together and test before we put it completely together to make sure that it functions. So this console, it's, uh, the console is actually put back together just enough to test right now. Basically it's put back together. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is the uh, power button. Uh, module here the jack power button so we're gonna go ahead and put that on right now come on alrighty the only thing I have not put is actually the, the screws themselves let's go ahead and test let me get to the screen and actually I'm gonna leave it like this for now put the power power cord HDMI oh, 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 oh. all righty let's go ahead and power it on Actually, as a matter of fact, let me put this the uh, I'm putting the Wi-Fi card in there as well.
Here we go. Just to make sure there's no components missing. No hardware components missing while, while testing. You turn it on now. It is powering on, power is on. Let me go ahead and get to the screen to see if we see a, uh, an Xbox flash screen. There we go. And we have an image. Awesome. So as it stands, this Xbox is prepared as of now. I'm going to turn it off and put this console back together and test again once it's fully back together. I'll be right back. For you guys, it'll be just about a second. For me, it'll take me, I don't know, five, ten minutes at most while I put this console together. Alrighty, the console's put back together, cleaned it up a bit as well, cleaned up my workstation a little bit as well. Let's go ahead and plug this in one more time and then just confirm and validate that everything's fully functional on this console after putting it back together and of course uh, replacing the retimer chip, the uh, TDP-158 chip. Of course it is turning on, power button is on. Let me go ahead and switch over to my screen. Test bench number three. There we go. We do see, of course, a splash screen. Awesome, awesome. Um, I am going to blur out the customer's information. We definitely do not want the customer's information to be displayed in any way, shape, or form. Um, so if you see a lot of blurriness, um, on the screen, it's because I went ahead and edited out to where the customer's information is completely blurred out. But this console is fully repaired. I don't have a, a I do not have a a, a 4K um, monitor and or TV. Actually, I do have one downstairs, but not one here that I can test with. So what I will do. Is just check to see if this console has a uh, at least uh, resolution of 1080p, and if it does, well, we're gonna call this console being fully, fully, fully fixed, repaired. I'm currently I've got my controller synced to the console, so we know that works. We know uh, we don't know that Wi-Fi works. I'm gonna test Wi-Fi as well. But right now, what I'm going to do is check, uh, actually, let's check Wi-Fi. Test connection. Uh, we can't do that unless we set up wireless, which we'll go ahead and set it up now. Alrighty. Wireless works perfectly. Go ahead and hit the test button. All good. Awesome. And we are also going to check oh, the resolution and I completely forgot. Oh man, it's asking for an update. We're going to skip that. We're going to stay offline. Let's check uh, the resolution. Where's the resolution at? General, I think. Nope. Device. Preferences. To, I'm trying to see where resolution would be at. TV. 1080p. And that's as far as I can test because I do not have uh, 4K capabilities. So yeah, this console, as it sits, it is repaired. I'm going to test just one last thing. Make sure that the disk drive functions, that it still works. I'm going to insert a disk in here, unless one's already in there. 
Nope, there isn't one in there. I'm gonna insert. Oh, there is one in there. It's your baby can read. Um, I'm gonna insert in the game. Make sure that it reads the game. Insert what uh, the disc was inserted. There it is. It is reading the game. It's right there. Awesome. All righty. We're not going to install it. We're going to get the game out. Not sure why I didn't read it the first time, but yeah, it is being read. All righty. Once again, this console is prepared now. I will. I would like to say, uh, if you stayed in tune and watched this video this far along, thank you. Thank you very much. Do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the like button as well as the subscribe button as well. Um, that way you'll get notified for any future videos that I do decide to uh, basically record and upload for you guys. Um, yeah. And if, uh, if you want to see any of the equipment that I actually use on this video and you want to partake and possibly purchase yourself, if you want to have a help with small channel, um, I will leave uh, links in the description below of most of all the, uh, the uh, material and or items I actually use to do any such repairs. And you can definitely, if you head on the link, the Amazon link, it does give me a kickback and it helps the channel out basically uh, continue on making additional and or more videos for you guys and upload them and hopefully uh, help anyone out there to either attempt to do their own repair um, or if it's just for learning purposes or if it's just for content purposes, whatever the case may be. All right. Once again, thank you very much. See y'all in my next video. Peace, guys.